This is the biking platform 2.0. If you watched our older video, you saw this platform. This platform's actually been in two trucks now. We originally had a four-door crew cab Super Duty, and then we put it into our Super Cab, extended cab truck. And it is bolted in place using the factory seat mounting bolts. And the interesting thing is between the crew cab and super cab, the bolt mounts are the exact same. So this platform bolted in between the trucks with zero modifications, which is pretty fun, a little tidbit to know. A lot of people have asked about dimensions and sizes for this platform. And more or less, you just need to build a platform around what you need to carry with it. And it does take trial and error to figure out how high to make it, you know, the di different dimensions, forward, back, and so forth. It just depends on how you're gonna use it. I'll show you how we use it and what changes we made on 2.0 version. So 2.0 version started because we bought e-mountain bikes. And they're about three inches longer wheelbase for each of our bikes. So my bike, I believe, is a large, and Faith's bike is a small, but they are longer than our old bikes. So we had to move the mounts. Originally the mounts, the fork mounts, were sitting on top of the platform. Because the bikes are so long, we had to move them down to the front of the platform, so mounted them horizontally. And what it basically allowed it is the fork sits right in this door cubby here. So it, it basically, this cutout is perfect for the fork to sit right in there. The tolerance is when you start getting a really big bike into a vehicle inside, get very, very, very particular. So there's a lot of trial and error fitting to make it all work. You can see in the top to get the height right, that, I mean, the handlebars have less than an inch height up here. And then to have clearance at the back for the handlebars, and then we also have each of our bikes kind of at a little bit angle. So Faith's bike is, is kind of like this and my bike is more like this. Anyways, it allows for either of our bikes to be loaded or unloaded without the other um, necessarily. So there's no sequence to it. And so it took a lot of trial and error to get that because I didn't want to require one bike to be removed to get to the other one or vice versa for loading. Um, so I'll show you how we load and unload the bikes really quick. I'll pull mine out, put it back in, and then I'll Faith take her bike out so you can see how that works. Now these bikes are pretty heavy. I think mine is about 50 pounds. Um, and Yours we're a little, more than 50 pounds. a little concerned about trying to get it in and out, but it actually isn't too bad. So the tire is just secured with a little bungee and this little bungee guy basically just goes around the frame to hold the tire in place. And then I can just roll the tire out, set it aside. And then the fork mount is just a, a spit on style fork mount. So you just undo the, undo the little deal there, pull it out. And you can lift it straight up. is so pretty simple and then reloading is kind of the same process what I do is grab the back of this thing it's pretty heavy just set it up on top of the platform and then just roll it on back into place and sometimes the pedals get in the way so you gotta rotate them a bit to make sure that they clear everything We also wanted the platform high enough to where we could have storage underneath it. My side has <clears throat> a slidey box that was actually pulled out already, but it has it stores our rec gear for the most part, helmets, gloves, that sort of stuff. And on Peter's side, we have all of our recovery gear for the truck itself. So yeah, let's show you guys how what we put in here. So um, I have these bags for tools. I actually have two of them. This is one of them. So we built it so that in our typical driving position the bag could be removed and put back in here 
And then behind that is all of our recovery gear. So this is tree straps, uh, we've got shackles, extension ropes, all sorts of fun stuff in a bag right behind the seat. Now, that's something that I've seen a lot of guys when they're doing off-road. All their recovery gear is in this really fancy drawer in the back of their truck. That's not helpful at all. If you actually need to recover yourself or a vehicle, chances are you're not in a good position. So I would say make sure your essential recovering gear is reachable from your front seat. And that way, if you get it in a bad spot, you can actually get yourself out with your gear and you're not uh, in a bad way. In our door cubby, we store <coughs> gloves for moving rocks or winches, um, tire pressure gauge, tire deflators, battery that we use for our DeWalt pull saw and our impact gun. And then under the seat is where we store the hose for ARB. So we've got two hoses because we've got two compressors and uh, each one we store underneath the front seat. So it's really fast to grab it and have access to it. And then this back area, I typically store stuff I don't need to get to really quick. So we've got like a spill kit, our little siphon hose for fuel, a winch rope extension, torque wrench, breaker bar, crap like that. That you know, it's, it's nice to have. Uh, we also have a DeWalt impact gun that uh, we bring, because if you do need to like pull off a tire or something like that, man, <laughs> that makes quick work of it. Um, so that's been really handy to have. So yeah, this, this storage underneath the platform is kind of invaluable. It also allows the, all the gear you put in there to kind of be held in place, which is really nice. So it's semi-organized and it also everything has a place. The other thing we do underneath the seat, so really quick you can pull out the tire plug kit. So <laughs> this is one of those things that you need to have really fast access to because if you have to dig through all your gear and your tire is going flat, you could damage your tire and then have to actually pull it off. But if you can get at it really quick when your tire has got a nail or screw or bolt in it and actually hook up your air compressor and plug it before it does damage to the tire, Oh, so good. We've done that multiple times on trailer, this truck, whatever. It works really well. Um, In the worst places where you don't want to have to tow. We also carry along a little lithium battery boost jump box under the seat. So anyway, it's really simple. It holds all that stuff in place and it basically allows you to get out your gear really fast, which is super essential. So let's go ahead and uh, have Faith show you removing her bike so you can see how that works on that side. All right, so on this side of the platform, we typically, Faith was mentioning, there's a, a pull-out bag that slides out and it has these little cubbies and... It has three cubbies, it's awesome, because we carry all of our rec gear, any extra camping food that we don't have room for in the camper after grocery shopping. And then right here is all of our paddleboard accessories that don't fit with the paddle boards underneath the camper. Yeah, like so, our paddles, they break down and we fit them under the platform, the pump. The pump, the hoses. For that. Patch it's really kits. Nice. It's really nice, it's so great. Her fork mount is very similar. We moved it to the face of the platform and then you can see um, it's got tight clearance, but it's just enough. So it, you know, the, the handlebars clear everything and there is the one window. Her change. back seat or her back or front tire, she just bungees to the back wall. And then we also have lots of room underneath the bikes that we put our hydration packs and helmets yes, and shoes shoes all that stuff so that goes right there so we pull that out first and uh, so one thing that has changed on my bike in the last week is i have new pedals which are wider than my old pedals and i'm noticing that they cross paths with peter's bike and these are 29 inch tires or wheels which uh that was also a factor because our old bikes were 27.5 and going up to 29 inch diameter is that much more to try to fit height wise and length wise. So it's definitely a factor when you're 
fitting in a tight space, but we absolutely love carrying the bikes inside because absolutely. it keeps them secure. They're Out easy the to, uh, you know, use. You can just have them with you all the time, which is really nice. So it's definitely been a fantastic thing to have. So it is a little bit more challenging with the new pedals. They're about three inches wider than the old ones. The old ones were clipping. There so it is. Bad. It still works. Ta-da! Yeah, so we've been using this platform for about a year now, and it's actually worked out really well. You can see we actually had to do a small little cutout for the brake caliper to fit. It's like I said, it's it's a uh, game of of uh, fractional inches to make everything work, but you know you can do it, and it's pretty sweet to have the ability. Uh, we've got our extension for a pull saw that sits back there. Anyways, pretty cool. That's uh, something I just wanted to kind of give you guys an update because I know some of people have asked and looked at the old platform, and then were curious about what we're still doing. Yep, four years later, we are still using the same bike platform with yeah, some modifications. We didn't really modify this one until just over a year ago when we got these bikes. So we ran the same platform for what, three years, which it was great. Our yeah, they, other bikes were a little smaller. These just required uh, modification because of the length. And you can see, we still have the same back tire kind of uh, retainer, which is just some angle uh, aluminum that we kind of just ground down and stuff so it has a nice spot. It gives you alignment for where to aim the tire into and then it keeps the uh, tire kind of positioned while you're driving. But yeah. Uh, yeah, really simple to build, not that expensive and it's more just time consuming. So if you guys are looking at uh, how to haul your mountain bikes or any bikes, I would highly encourage interior hauling yes. and um, it is possible in an extended cab truck, the quad cab trucks are very spacious. Oh yeah. But because the extended cab is actually a little bit easier in some ways because you have no center post. Sure. So you have basically this whole cab is open when you uh, open the rear door, which does make it it makes it a lot more feasible. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions about the platform, post them up down below and we will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Say bye. Bye.